was a lot of good comedy in it, I thought. I agree. That being said, the very f- f- like first scene between uh, between them and maybe at the <laughs> dinner. <laughs> You're a fucking mess. <laughs> I need like an edit Cody's bodily sound. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Every> fucking... <laughs> if it can be expelled out of your body, Cody will do it. <laughs> Jakey Poo. Just grinding some marijuanas. Grind it. Grind it. <laughs> All right, guys. Let's uh, let's get a little smoky. Well, Anthony can't because he's a fucking square. The, <laughs> my body is absorbing the THC that I ingested. I feel <laughs> it. You know, like the come up of an edible, I feel it. So it's the same idea. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm just giving you grief, my friend. I'm only crying on the inside. <laughs> I like the undeniable sound of a grinder. Like there's no, there's nothing else that that sound could be. Oh yeah, that's me grinding up. Sweet. I got this new weed. It's called uh, Smarty Plants. Smarty Plants. Nice. Yeah. For what's your Halloween costume? I'm gonna go as Doctor Frankenfurter. Who's that? From Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, nice. Yeah. Is that Tim Curry's character? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Oh, so man. You're, you're, you're going to dress in full drag and everything? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to order some lingerie and get some leather, <laughs> some leather boots with heels and shit. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Mary's going to do my makeup. That's hilarious. Are you just using this as an excuse to do what you've always wanted to do? Exactly. <laughs> Dress up as Tim Curry for a whole day. <laughs> Dude, yeah. So you're not going to be the comedian? I'm yeah, going to do that. I'm, I mean, usually I have multiple costumes. <laughs> so I think there's Huntington Comedy Scene invited me to join. They have a show on like the 23rd where... Uh, I'm going to be, and I think I'm going to do that show as the and write an entire set as the comedian. Nice. And uh, you know, only the really nerdy will enjoy it. <laughs> well, you said it here first, or you've been saying it, so you got to do that. <laughs> I'm going to hold I you will, to it, <laughs> dude. I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm not going to cut my hair. I'm just going to kind of like gel it back a little bit. You know? Oh yeah, you could definitely do that. Anyways, dude, I'm smoking weed because I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not cool this episode. Was there an episode where you were cool? Oh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you said no. You said oh, no. Shit. Oh, god. oh god. Oh Cody, I thought you almost died. <laughs> I thought I almost died. You like, <laughs> you like, you like, you like doubled over. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I felt like I was dying for just a minute. Damn. Honestly, yeah, the weed almost killed me. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy if that's how it went? That's, uh, what's that shit? I forgot what it, it was in, uh, don't be a menace while drinking your juice when they're smoking the weed. And he's like, what's this called? <laughs> and he's like, it's called, death. yeah, it's called death. <laughs> and they smoke and he dies. <laughs> That's actually a movie I have seen. God, I would hope so. It's like, uh, yeah. a classic. It's the Wayne, the Wayne's. You were watching house party yesterday. Hell yeah, dude. I, I saw it was on Netflix and I, I was high as fuck. And, uh, the dancing scene is my favorite. So I gave a play by play of everything. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> but yeah, dude, house party's legit. <coughs> God damn. You're right, you're right there. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to the ghost of Cody. Yeah. The ghost of Cody past. Yeah, getting to the Halloween spirit. <sighs> yeah. Dude, I uh 
I'm going to be especially ripped because I took a week b- vacation from weed. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. While you were on tour? Yeah. You didn't smoke any weed? I didn't smoke until Saturday or Friday night. Friday night. Was that by like choice or circumstance? Choice. I decided it's been a long time since I've like taken a little breather. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Like literally years. Um, probably, <laughs> probably like two or three since I've like taken an intentional breather. Yeah. And while uh, Kate said she doesn't have any issues with weed, she does not smoke herself. It gives her anxiety. Mm. And I was like, it's still super illegal in some of the states we're going through. Mm. So why not just like take the time to like give my lungs and brain a break? Yeah. Although we are stoners, you know, we could always promote a tea break or any sort of break or, you know, a tea yeah. break, a tea break, <laughs> as, the, as you know, get your tolerance back. Oh, is yeah. that what that stands for? Yeah. <laughs> I thought you meant like actually like, ah, it was some, some tea. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not in fucking England. What is this? Dude, I like We take tea, coffee actually. breaks in America, Jake. I don't drink either, to be honest. I don't really like either. I like both. Yeah. I, I drink coffee if I really like want slash need to, but it always makes me shit like no other. <laughs> and it just gives me, it, to me, it feels like the worst feelings of cocaine. Oh, man. Gets me. I mean, really I love jitter- coffee. Though. Gets me really jittery at the end. Despite all the things you just said, <laughs> I would almost say coffee might be like, if not my favorite, definitely my second favorite drug. Yeah, right. I would definitely c- classify it as a drug too. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> That's why, honestly, I do like the combo of weed and coffee. They kind of balance each other out in a weird way. Like you're mm-hmm. not at equilibrium, but like you're not you're not either or. See, a, I just true writer smokes cigarettes and drinks coffee. <laughs> I am more of a yeah, because true writers just need to shit all the time. Exactly. Yes, whether it's on <laughs> paper or on paper, <laughs> you're just shitting on something's paper. coming out. Something's words yeah. or shit. Yeah, words. Just random shit. What kind of tea do you guys drink? Do you? It depends. So, I, I, like at night, obviously, I'll drink like a caffeine free, like sleepy time tea, maybe like a little, j- like, sh- like a ginger tea or something like that. Chai tea, boba yeah. tea. No, chai tea usually has caffeine. Uh, in it. Yeah, I don't know anything about the tea yeah. world. I'm not a big tea drinker, to be honest. So, it's because we're not in fucking England, dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this Ready is America, is bro. <laughs> <laughs> that was the most patriotic I've ever seen you, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be against the British. <laughs> Always. <laughs> But yeah, guys. So yeah, this I'm honestly already dumb high Damn. from that one hit. <laughs> That's cool. one hit KO. Hey, hey. Speaking of one hit KOs, oh. Shang Chi. Shang Chi. Nice. He had one of those. He did. Yeah. I uh, I, or the movie I like to refer to as uh, long unnecessary shots uh, with BMWs in the scene. <laughs> that was your takeaway from challenging yeah. <laughs> dude, dude honestly like that was like my biggest beef with shan chi but i i had said that for black widow too there was bmws yeah <laughs> if you want me to be completely real i probably wouldn't have even noticed if you wouldn't have said that in black widow so i blame you jake well <laughs> i blame capitalism and specifically yeah, the that, automotive industry <laughs> yeah yeah that's fair i accept that blame <laughs> not like not me. Actually, yeah, like, the I blame ex- on Cody. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you might nah. be onto a weird conspiracy because okay, oh. if they're doing that, and then what do they do in the movie? They destroy public transportation. <gasps> That's a huge You're scene right, in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, dude. Oh shit. They're like, don't <laughs> take public transportation, or you might get mauled by a Serbian man with a sword. Yeah. Yeah. It exactly. might even be like. How do we know it's not funded by like Uber or Lyft? You know, oh, oh shit. This, this can go way deeper than we think it goes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it sick. all goes back to that original conspiracy, Jake. Remember, like during the pandemic, we started texting about Kevin Feige oh, and we discovered sure. there was a weird connection between him and 5G. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Dude, yeah. 5G. The true villain. 
It was honestly, I really liked the movie, but there was like that. There were like a couple shots in particular, like one where they were like straight up posing around a BMW, and I was like, Ugh. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know. Yeah, I didn't pick up on. I didn't that. really. Yeah, I didn't really take that away. No, who did have a cool car? Razor Fist. That was a cool car. <laughs> that was a BMW. <laughs> oh, that was. I got. Oh, I got. He's uh, right. It I was got, a BMW. <laughs> yeah, it was a BMW, and it popped out of the. Uh, when they got out of the forest, they all just like there was this like five second shot where they're just like standing like action heroes around the bmw and i'm like <laughs> oh well everyone knows that bmw is the preferred car of any ten thousand year old immortal man so <laughs> yeah. also if you're like driving through a forest you need a bmw yeah it can yeah. handle those tight turns as the trees try to destroy you yeah everyone drives when you go camping, what do you think of BMW? But, that is not true at all. <laughs> when you go camping, you think of BMW. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> well, on that note, welcome back to Comics and Chronic. It's your boy Jake. It's your boy Anthony. It's your boy Cody. And we're Woo-hoo! discussing Shang or excuse me, Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Yes. Woo! Or uh, Sean Chi, that's his original yeah. name. That part, <laughs> that part was funny. I like that. that yeah, like, all he did is change his name from Sean to Sean. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, what so no wonder. How did you guys? You. Did you guys like really like the dialogue and stuff in the movie? I thought like Aquafina was pretty funny. I like, yeah, I, thought, I liked yeah. Aquafina, and nothing against her. I think it might be the first time I've actually liked Aquafina. I like Nora from Queens. I've not seen a lot of it. I haven't but, seen but, it at all. Some, sometimes, like I don't know. I'm not. Too big until like she her was pretty it. funny in Crazy Rich Asians too. I didn't see that. I also I didn't watch it. Yeah. No, this movie was honestly to me one of the funniest Marvel movies. I think like I wasn't expecting that, but it was like there was a lot of good comedy in it. I thought. I agree. That being said, the very f- f- like first scene between uh, between them and maybe at the <laughs> dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> I need like an edit Cody's bodily sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if we can be expelled out of your body, Cody will do it. Dude, I am feeling extra messy today. <laughs> messy boy. A messy little baby. <laughs> I... I liked, I feel like Cody, you, you, you're coming at it and you know, you're also welcome to with a pretty critical eye. I actually liked it. I went into it not being admittedly too hyped on it. And I found it to be like funny and endearing. And also like there were some cool, like cultural Asian shit, especially like when they're at Aquafina's house and the grandma asks like when they're going to get married and they're like, Oh no, we're, oh, yeah. we're just friends. Like that's, and I actually yeah. like that they kind of kept it like that, that they didn't end up falling in love, that they're like, no, right. we're, we're friends. Yeah. It's almost cool because not every superhero needs to have a love interest. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like, it wasn't really the focus of the movie. And even even crazier, I thought, like, the focus of the movie was, it wasn't necessarily Shang-Chi. It was more of his uh, father. I felt like yeah, it was his he, dad's He movie. was almost, like, the main character or definitely the secondary character, but probably, like, one of them. Like, him and his dad were probably the main characters. Yeah. yeah, I liked I liked that actor, and I liked that it was actually a lot of uh, Chinese being spoken. Yeah, lots yeah. of lots of Chinese. It was a lot more than I thought. I was like, oh, there's a lot of subtitles for this. Yeah, which I, I, again, like I that never bothers me. Like, oh, it doesn't some bother me at all. Yeah, some people can't watch movies with subtitles. When I when I was walking out of the theater, someone in front of me was like, maybe next time there won't be so much subtitles. <laughs> I was like, but what? <laughs> I was like, yo, can you people not fucking read? <laughs> like Dude, also it hilarious. would take you out of the movie like they're there you know the movie starts with subtitled uh you know yeah, chinese dialogue in, like, and feudal china they're not gonna yeah be exactly <laughs> yeah that's hilarious yeah but no, I really liked it. I thought it was cool and I like that actor. I forgot I don't know his name, but the dude who played Simu Shang-Chi. Liu. That's Shang-Chi or the old That's Shang-Chi. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. He, he, he I know cool. you guys don't watch it. He was a, a big uh part of Kim's convenience. I, wa- I, I watched a few episodes. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, he's yeah. he's What's a main that? character of that. It's a Canadian sitcom. Yeah. It's based. It's about a Korean. Well, he's he's Chinese, but that shows about a Korean family, and he plays a Korean. Uh, he works at a car dealership. 
So, which is funny because in uh, Shang-Chi, he's a valet. So he just is always going to be around cars. He's, I a, guess. he's a car guy. Yeah. And that's cars. another thing about cars going back to like BMWs. Like his job is like, you know, he's just a valet. So like he always gets to drive the cool cars, but he never gets to like have the cool car. Like his apartment is kind of like, I don't know. It's not anything like he kind of lives very modestly. I like that. He was a class trader that his dad's basically like a billionaire conqueror. Yeah. And he's like, I'm going to live in a tiny apartment and like give away my fort, like not have anything to do with my fortune and stuff. Although yep. San Francisco in 2021, let's be honest. How realistic is it that he doesn't have money? <laughs> <I'm Yeah. just laughs> <saying>. Good point. <laughs> So, Good point. Sorry, capitalism. I'm going to call you out for your inaccuracies in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I did really like that the, this movie didn't require him to like learn powers or come to terms with it. Like he basically just like already was a dope ass hero. Yeah, I like that. Right. I like that he actually didn't have any powers and he was just a dank martial artist. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was hired to be basically the best, you know, trained killer on the planet by his dad. Speaking of trained killers, the one thing I thought was a total flizzop was the quote death dealer. He looked really cool and he did very little. Yeah. Wasn't he supposed was to be like the, the top ranked killer? No, that was the like the assassin with the, the, the with main the mask yeah. and the ninja shit. That just got killed by that weird monster. He got soul sucked. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, I don't know. <laughs> like, th- even throughout like the promotion for the movie, that dude was everywhere because he looks cool. And he was like, yeah. really kind of nothing. Yeah. To me, I, I, I viewed it as another taskmaster type of waste. Yeah. Taskmaster. Really? Type of waste. On the level of that kind of waste? Yeah. I thought it was yeah. a cool character, it's not the, meant to be more than thing. what it was. No, it's the same thing with. um. What's her name in the new Star Wars movies? Who has the silver? Brienne of Tarth played that character. Oh, uh, who really Captain didn't Phasma. do? Yeah, who really didn't do anything with? But looks cool, so it's easy uh-huh. to like market for like toys and shit. Mm. Like I thought that was. It was I was like, oh, all right, this guy I didn't see really what you mean. do I see anything what you mean. in the movie. Yeah, point, point. yeah, that's unfortunate because it is a cool character. You're right. He, you wish you could have seen more, more shit with that. But you know what? His sister was a great character. Jai Ling. She His was cool. Sister was cool. Yeah. Yeah, his sister was super cool. Do you think, uh, so the end credit scene, I know we're jumping around as per usual, but... Uh, I laughed, honestly, at the end credit scene, only because I, I, in my head I was like, oh, it's like the old Ten Rings, but with graffiti. It just looks cool. Yeah, she like, takes over. I mean, I'm down, I'm down to see where it goes. What I had a question was... You think she's going to be a villain? Hmm. I don't, know. I don't think she's going to be a villain. There's nothing... Like, I think she's just going to have power, which is not necessarily good or bad. It's just like, what is she going to do with that power? Like, she's taking over, you know, one of the biggest... In the MCU, are they still a terrorist organization? Is that what they're classified as? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. You know, like, that's how we know of the Ten Rings in Iron Man in the very first MCU movie. They <laughs> are the ones that kidnap Tony Stark, but it's not actually Shang-Chi's dad. These are people posing as his organization. Yeah. But because he wanted them to, he like funded other like right. like like shell companies. cells you know, like yeah cells. There we go. And he even hired Trevor Slattery, which I actually liked. I thought Ben Kingsley yes. was hilarious. Dude, he was ben great. Kingsley was so funny. Yeah, was I was like really surprised that he was in there. And then I was like, oh, yeah. and then I was glad like for how much he was in it. Like once he shows up, he's in it for a good amount. Yeah, I like that. Sir Ben Kingsley, knighted, he, knighted, <laughs> knighted man. actor. Yep. Yeah, is just playing this goofy ass <laughs> loser. <laughs> Dude, I loved at the end. I know we're jumping around again, but fuck it. At the end of the final battle, when you see like all the dead bodies everywhere, you know, the camera's panning over, and you see him, and that little creature goes up to him and nudges yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, Maurice. And you see he wakes up. He's like, "Shh, I'm acting," and he goes back yeah. like, playing dead. <laughs> yeah, I actually felt bad. I was like, "Oh no, they killed Trevor." That's what I like, thought too. I was like, oh, man, he was so cool. And then he wakes up. He's like, "No, I'm acting." Yeah, <laughs> like, like he was hilarious. One of the funniest parts of the movie. And what really made me like him even more was when he was like, what inspired him to become an actor was he thought like the, the planet, planet of the apes were actually like monkeys acting. Dude, <laughs> that was incredible. He's like, the that training, was... you would have to give a monkey. So <laughs> right a... <laughs> yeah, he's like, they're not, the monkeys aren't really riding horses, they're acting. Yeah. Like they're riding horses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he was awesome. 
Yeah, that was and so I, good. I'm actually glad how they did it because dude, I'm not going to lie. I don't like Iron Man 3. I hated the reveal that he was the Mandarin. Right. Which this is this definitely MCU trying retconned. to fix that. Oh, yeah, well, I exactly. watched uh, essentially that, that pitch meetings video and the dude even jokes about it. He's like, are we going to make it seem like we've been trying to link everything this whole time? But in reality, <laughs> he's like, yeah, we're doing like, Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, I don't blame them. Like, I get it. Like, there's no way they would have seen this trajectory for their movies. So they do mm-hmm. have to try and retcon some shit. But it's yeah, also, absolutely. but like, yeah, it's, it's pretty like blatant. As people oh, they had to actually retcon like Shang-Chi, the character from the comics, like a decent amount, like because so much of it is like just it's probably just of the time and terrible racist. Like yeah. his father's name, his father isn't like, OK, so I, his name in the movie is Wen Wu, right? Yeah. But he's the we knew him or we think of him as the Mandarin. But even his characters, like they named me after a chicken dish. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. You know, yeah. in the comics, the Mandarin or Wen Wu is not Shang Chi's dad. It it was this guy called Fu Manchu. Like what? Like <laughs> God. that's how not that's how creative that's how bad Stanley it was. Is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so in the comics, they definitely retconned it. So now, and and it's way better, obviously. But Wen Wu, the character, he to me, he's the standout character for me in the movie. Like yeah. his whole arc his, is I, like I would amazing. agree. His I would agree. Arc. His acting, everything. Yeah, he was a good actor, that guy. Although, yep. I th- yeah, dude, he was incredible. He was a really good actor, honestly. Really incredible. But I love that his arc is, I'm a, a villainous conqueror until I meet a woman so hot that I decide to be good. <laughs> and the reason I turn back to villainy is to try to bring her back from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> We've all been there. I would. Just yeah. You can, <laughs> but like, it's a true redemption because he really does give up the 10 rings and the 10 rings give you so much fucking power. Like, it's a big deal that he's like, no, like you could literally be immortal with the 10 rings. He is immortal with the 10 rings, but he literally gives all that up for what's her name. I, I think her name is Ying Lee. Yeah. Her name yeah. is Ying Lee. That's the mom. And the mom. OK, I, I have a weird fan theory that the oh, mom where she lives is connected to so you know how in Iron Fist he has like Kung Lung, which is like a heavenly city. That's yeah. kind yeah. of like where she's from. It's a, like a heavenly city. Ooh. I feel like there might be some connection there to the point where like I would love it if she was like the original Iron Fist. You know what I mean? Oh, that'd be sick. Yeah. She was pretty much an airbender. A lot of airbending going on yeah. in the movie. Yeah, that was so funny. <laughs> that they, yeah. yeah, that they just were airbenders. Yeah, the, the whole time, as soon as it, th- that fight started, I was like, oh, this is like Avatar the Airbender. Yeah. It was cool. I liked it, honestly. You know, the um, cinematographer for The Matrix did it, it was also for this movie. So I believe it. you could see Dude, that in a lot of the fights. That. That's yeah. cool. I liked the fight. I liked when he meets, um, what, I forget her name. Ying Lee. Ying Lee, yeah. Yeah. That, 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 was, yeah. that choreography was beautiful. Yeah, literally. Like it was it was it was like watching a that like was like that dance slash fight was like almost like very artistic in the way oh, it was for sure. shot and yeah. choreographed. Like it was stunning. It was watch. for sure an homage to Crouching Tiger oh, Hidden Dragon. There's yeah. literally a scene that looks like that, like it, in a forest. It, looks it might like be it. like even, a thing they even do. Even the um the coloring, what's it called? The palette. Yes. The color yeah. palette was very similar mm-hmm. to Crap It might Crap literally Crap. be a Chinese film technique. I forget what it's called. That they literally the way like every we're describing it, like the colors and the um, like you said, it's like art. Like it's meant to look like almost picturesque and like the way they fight is like so smooth and like they're not they're fighting, but you know they're not trying to really hurt each other, you know? Like they're trying to test out the limits of their power. Yeah, it's like a dance of courtship you'll see between mm. birds or something. Ah, yeah. A dance of courtship. You sound like a uh, Aria's <laughs> Aria's Bravosi trainer. The, the, the water dancer. What's his name? Serio Pharrell. There we go. You sound like Serio Pharrell. Like, ah, it is a choreography. Like <laughs> <laughs> R.I.P. Serio. Yeah. Wow, Cody, you could actually be him for Halloween if you wanted to. That's true. You could also be Serio <laughs> Pharrell. Who's Serio Pharrell now? Arya's sword. For Game trainer. of Thrones. We took a whole, we took a oh, turn gotcha. to Westeros yeah, for a second. Yeah, Cody's yeah, watched yeah, Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love Game of Thrones, except for the last season. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We can all agree there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, so let's talk about the uh 
the fighting tournament part of the movie, which is not really, it's not really a tournament. You get to see a fight. That part was hilarious. With, what's his name? He's the correspondent on the daily show. No, he's hilarious as the uh, nightclub owner. Yeah, yeah he was go. so funny. The nightclub owner. He was funny as fuck. Dude, he was hilarious. Uh, the fight, although I didn't like the way they made Abomination look. Yeah, so there's actually a lot of questions that oh, that really? raised for one. Wait, what? He looked awesome. What are you talking about? Yeah, he, he looked awesome. He was I like comic the way book he accurate. Are you kidding? I love the way he looked. He looked way better than, you know how like the Hulk changed from the movie? I feel like they didn't explain that, and I don't need an explanation. I don't need an explanation. The graphics are better. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I, he had the more he abomination was way more comic accurate looking than than for uh, sure because he had like the the, the, the fin. he had the fins yeah yeah no, I loved it man I think it looks cool I thought it was awesome that abomination was basically just like in it with homeboy what's his name well so okay so that's like what gives Wong. me like why because last time we see abomination Incredible Hulk beats him. I'm assuming Shield took him into, or you know, because General prison. General yeah, the right raft. there. So yeah, so, the yeah, so he's in prison, and, but he's fighting with Wong, and they're both in on it together. But then you see when Wong opens the portal, they go into a place, and it's not the Sanctum Santorum. Mm-mm. So it's like where, how, you know what I mean? Like how is Abomination allowed to fight? How is he not in prison right now? I wonder if Wong is just busting him out for fights. What? That then, seems very nah, yeah. unethical. <laughs> you know what I think is happening? Like, I think what you were just saying, Jake, like Ross is putting, we, I think we know that either Ross and or Val are putting together a team. Yeah. And it would Ooh. be very easy to be like, Hey, we need, we need to, uh, we need you to train abomination every week, you know, go into pit with him. Why would Wong, who is this like guardian, like why would he do that that sounds very corrupt because obviously like like, val knows that there's a big threat coming right we she's kind of hinting at something wait i just want to Wong would be in on it yeah go for it oh well so that's what i'm saying do you think wong is going to be like this team's counterpoint to dr strange maybe or 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 just maybe like almost the nick fury kind of of this phase going through like recruiting like the new avengers Somehow. That's true. He because he is blatantly recruiting Shang Chi at the end, right? Yeah. Like I didn't like. I was like, why isn't Doctor Strange there? I think that is an important detail that they're purposely. Why is it specifically Wong training Abomination? Why is he, you know, on the Avengers meeting? Like he he obviously has a huge role to play, but I'm not sure what it is yet. I feel like uh, he if he is, even if he is doing playing like the recruitment role, I think if anything, he's probably being fooled into thinking it's for a good cause. Mm, there you go. Kind of like bringing the dark Avengers uh, together. You know what I'm mm. saying? Like, but he thinks it, he's like forming a team for good while maybe Val or her people might have like ur- ulterior motives. Right. And to be fair, these, this is just like pure speculation. Ross and Val are not part of this. At the end of the movie, there's a post credit scene where Shang-Chi and Katie, Wong takes them back to the Sanctum Sanctorum, and they talk to Captain Marvel and Bruce Banner. Okay. And Bruce Banner is human. He's not the Hulk anymore. Why? Why? Exactly why. But he why? still has a broken arm. <laughs> okay, but still. So I really want to know why. Because I, t- I saw it with, uh, my buddy Joey. You know, Joey, shout out to Joey. Fucking. And I was like, why is he back to Bruce Banner form? Because I'm not yeah. going to lie. I actually hated Smart Hulk. Yeah, I think a lot of people didn't like him. A lot like of people him. didn't like him. That's probably why. <laughs> okay, so then what I mean is like, in Endgame, he's like, oh, you know, I, I fused the two, so that way we can be better. So why did he defuse? Right. So so here's another thing about Shang-Chi. They don't explicitly say it, but the movie takes place in 2024, which is the year after... The snap. The snap. So it takes place at the same time as Spider-Man Far From Home. Yeah. So. We're, we have to assume a year after Endgame, somewhere in between there, maybe this is where She-Hulk will take place in that time frame. We see Bruce Banner revert back or maybe the snap like after that, the power started to disappear or something. And now he's like human, but he could switch again. I don't know. I think it would be really cool if they revealed that. So you know how like he combines the two. If he's successful in separating mm. the two and there's Bruce Banner and then there's Oh, that would be dope. I would like that. Or like maybe he literally passes it on to uh, his cousin and like she Hulk uh, in that way, like only one person could have the gamma in the MCU. That's kind of cool. Maybe. I don't think a lot of people would like that. They'd be like, well, that's not him. It's not comic book accurate, actually. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I don't think 
Um, I mean, I wouldn't care either way, uh, but they're going to have to do something just because, uh, what's his name? Mark Ruffalo is getting a little old to be. Yeah, he looks old. He looked old as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, Peepaw he's not getting Hulk. like old because it's, really, it's not like <laughs> Bruce Banner needs to do anything like athletic or, you know. No. You yeah. Know what I mean, but yeah. he does like put on the mocap suit and yeah, like, yeah, do he, all he, the stuff. And he does the voice funny. too. Yeah. It's no longer Lou Ferrigno. Shout yeah, it Sh- I, no, it was Lou Ferrigno in the uh, Ang Lee one. Oh, well, yeah. yeah, but that's not the MCU. No, I know, but but he could come back oh. maybe in the multiverse somehow. <laughs> oh shit, that'd be sick—a variant. Yeah. So in the post credit scene, what do you guys think? Um, so Wong is like, or they're all like, oh, it's sending out a signal, but it it's like the time it's like not coming from anywhere in space. It's like almost coming from a point in time, but it would be way older than what these things appear to be. So what do you guys think that's all about? Like, what is that beacon that they're emitting? Mephisto. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there might be some merit to it's that. It's a beacon to hell. <laughs> no, I think, I think it's because they even they say, how long has your dad had these? And he says, like, what, 2,000 years? Yeah, and then like, Bruce oh, Banner says older. they're way older than that. Mm-hmm. And so, like, yeah, so, like, what if it's, like, a question of, like, because they, they said it's giving out a signal, but what if it's not giving out a signal to where, but to when? And then that's how they're going to loop in uh, Kang. Kang, the Conqueror. I and, like, totally for some reason, that. he would need the Ten Rings to form some kind of, you know, mm-hmm. fuckulizing weapon of some sorts. <laughs> Fuckulizing. <laughs> uh, th- I could see that. Um I am so when is Fantastic Four coming out? That's not even like given a date. Oh, it's, just, it's just like it, they had the four at the end of the Marvel Phase yeah. Four, but it's it's not it's nowhere near. They have so like we're talking like years. Years probably. away. It's years away. Mm, bummer. Um I would realistically say like three to four years. Yeah. Okay. So that's a disappointment. Yeah. Because I was like, man, it'd be cool if we got Galactus in here. Mm. Doesn't mean we can't start getting cameos of shit, little sprinkles. Yeah, I do kind of like the idea if the Fantastic Four is like sending out a beacon, maybe they're trapped somewhere. I don't like that theory because that theory only came them. about to me like on the internet. So I view that as like a fanboy internet theory. Oh, that's same thing, I, with, I, same I, thing as Mephisto. Like it, I group it in that kind of category where it's like, why would they be trapped in time? Why can't they just be? Okay, wait. So here's why I think it could be closer to Mephisto than that. The main villain of Shang Chi turns out to be the Dweller in Darkness. You don't really see it, but you know it's almost like a giant like was that the thing that killed thing. his dad? Or yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it, yeah, yeah exactly. Like- so, so okay, so check this out, Cody. Have you been watching What If? No, I missed it all. All right, so yeah, you're right. There's damn. a lot of Cthulhu ish type shit. What's the name? Yeah, uh, in a couple episodes you st- or something. Shuma Gorath, Shuma right? Gorath, but this yeah. this has a different name, but it could easily be the same thing or like whatever. So like, who would be either Shuma Gorath is like, or someone of that status is like trying to get into our universe now, or I mean, you would take it one step further and say Mephisto is or trying Dormammu. to break in Dormammu, but those are all like you know hellish yeah. demon like you know things in the MCU. But I like that like this thing is like apparently like if that is what it is okay so this thing was sending voices it was making shang chi's dad think that his mom was trapped and that his whole mission was to save her yeah Yeah. it was sending voices in his head okay there's another character that we've seen the exact same thing happen at the end of wandavision the same thing happens she hears the voices of kids that should be dead calling to her from like across the void I feel like those are connected somehow. And what if also going to fucking uh, Loki? Yes. When when he's at the table and he goes, he's like, we're crossing the threshold. Yeah. Like something is crossing into, you know? Yes. Oh, and then to go one step further, I saw something online where if you sync up that scene with the end of WandaVision, when there's a part where Kang is like, and then it drops. It's the exact moment where um, Wanda takes Agatha's powers and she falls. And you line up the scenes and whatever Kang drops and when Agatha falls, it happens at the same time. That's pretty cool. It's insane if you like see it. Like, 
again, I don't want to give Marvel too much credit because, like we said before, they always yeah, we could just but be if that's, boy overthinking it, but still, yeah, oh, we definitely that's are. The fun that's part. Yeah, that's why we're here. That's why we're high to <laughs> yeah. fanboy everything the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool because, like, yeah, like I'd imagine on some degree those have to be linked. Right, S- something has to be linked, I guess. Well, we know by the nature of the MCU, things are linked, things and are things linked. that things that seem like innocuous, not necess- they're not necessarily like unimportant, or it, they're like a a piece of something bigger. Like there's okay, so at the end of the movie, Shang Chi's sisters taking over the Ten Rings, right? In yeah. Ant Man, we know that the Ten Rings work with. Uh, like the villains of Ant Man, that that dude, um, Walton Goggins, Walt Goggins right? Yeah. So some people are speculating that, um, like he talks about, like you know, the war of the future is not going to be nanotech; it's going to be like quantum tech. And the next movie is qu- the next Ant Man is Quantum Mania. Yeah. So there's a theory that that, and this isn't mine, obviously, that um, Quantum Mania, Ant Man and Wasp Quantum Mania, is going to be about like, uh, it's like Shang Chi's sister has the ten rings, which means. She's also connected to Hydra. Like you said, could she be a villain? And they might be warring over this quantum technology that pr- would probably fuck up the multiverse even more if you think about it, right? That's Maybe insane. that's what's like everything's building towards like some giant like, holy shit, something's going to invade the MCU. That's what it's starting to feel like. Yeah, I totally agree with Anthony. It feels like we're like, I feel like, I mean, definitely Kang is going to be a huge part of it and a great villain, but there's some kind of force, something in the background that's just like, the, you just feel like this like shadowy presence kind yeah. of like we really all know. starting we all know to know cover. Who it is. <laughs> <laughs> See? Uh, and that would be even crazier because then like m- like who said Mephisto first maybe the Marvel people just like spread that false info yeah. to like build it up guerrilla marketing up. like yeah. yeah having us like having us subconsciously market to ourselves <gasps> yeah that's something Mephisto himself would do Mephisto is a great that's what the M stands for in Mephisto <gasps> is marketing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is uh Aren't they doing a Ghost Rider project, or am I crazy? No, they haven't yeah. announced it yet. There's a video game coming out that definitely has Ghost Rider. Mm. Nice. nice. I think it's cool that Shang-Chi was able to, like, basically Kamehameha, the Dweller in Darkness, oh, and, like, for sure, Kamehameha. eliminate him for now. <laughs> yeah. So, like, he's a strong-ass Avenger. Like, that's amazing that he has that level of, like, like you said, he was already... He has the power and he knows what to do with it because he's well, not like it was crazy because he like shot it down the dude's gullet into his chest and yeah. then made him burst from the inside. Yeah. It's so cool. I really did like that final battle. And and like the scene where going back to how great the dad was, the scene where he passes away like where he gets his soul sucked it's honestly like really <laughs> beautiful it's like a great finale <laughs> to his story yeah. sorry i'm laughing at you getting he him getting his soul sucked but even katie <laughs> says soul sucked yeah <laughs> yeah no, no, which just, is funny i was so like funny. okay they know it's funny <laughs> yeah. but like the first time remember let's go back to that six out of six mortal Kombat movie where cabal says he just got <laughs> oh, his soul yeah. sucked <laughs> line of the year they're just stealing it I see. <laughs> dude, actually the honestly the bus fight was my favorite. Who also, dude, I oh, thought yeah. I was cracking the fuck up when that comedian, I forget his name, but he's also in uh He's in like um Crashing Homecoming. Crashing. And he's in Homecoming. Oh, yeah. He's when he's he's the guy who's like, do a flip. So yeah, dude, yeah, I love yeah. when he's like, yo, what up? It's your boy. I got this crazy fight in the bus right now. <laughs> like, dude, I was cracking. Yeah, I'm gonna give you guys a play by play. I took in like, eighth grade. He's like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that line was sick. He was funny as fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Dude, I loved him in Crashing. Yeah, he, he's he's just oh, crazy. I loved cra- yeah, yeah, he's yeah. a funny guy. He's a funny comedian. Yeah, oh, Crashing, Crashing was such a good was show. Such a good show. Yeah, Crashing like Crashing, uh, honestly, like I watched it right when I was really getting back into stand up here in Morgantown, and ah, it really moved me. I think yeah. that's one of the reasons why I'd say Pete Holmes is one of my favorites. No, he's a great character. I I 
if he's not in more MCU movies now, I that's a mistake. I hope he is because of that, that, literally that whole scene, his whole part just cracked me the fuck up. Yep. I thought it was so Because funny. also, like, they start calling, um, in the comments, they're calling Shang-Chi bus boy. Yeah, bus boy. Well, he even yeah. when, when they go to the club in uh, Macau, yeah. he goes, yeah. oh, what's yeah. up? It's bus boy. Yeah. yeah so he's boy. responsible he's for like, Shang-Chi <laughs> rising to fame. Yeah. <laughs> Which exactly. is also how um, Tony Stark finds out about Peter Parker, right? In Civil War, he shows him he a sees video. That YouTube of, video. Yeah, of him stopping like a bus or a car. bus. Yeah, so that's a kind of, I wonder if that's on purpose. Which is actually a really, I like that scene of him stopping a car because I feel like even in the Raimi movies, well, not necessarily the Raimi movies, in, in the Tom Holland movies, there's very few examples of like truly like how strong Spider Man is. Uh, good point. In the comic books, he's actually like stupid strong. Yeah, yeah like, he's a monster. He has like relative, yeah, exactly. He's like super, like relative spider strength. He can like lift a car over his head if he really wanted, like easily. Yeah, and they never like. So I thought that was cool. Him stopping the car. Anyways, that's just a little nerd bit. <laughs> wow, nerd. nerd? There's yeah. no nerds that's listening to this. Dude. You well, fucking I think we're nerd. Only cool people listen to this. By the way, shout out <laughs> to our loyal commies out there who have been commenting. You guys are awesome. Yeah, yeah. for real. Hey, we usually save this for the end of the show, but if you're listening, if you're listening, you like us, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, follow us on TikTok now. Yeah. It's all comics and chronic. You'll find us right away. If you like us, share some of our shit on your stories. Like, we know you're listening. We know you think we're fucking dope. Share with your friends. Let them know too. Yeah. Let them know you're dope <laughs> by telling them about us. <laughs> <laughs> I also I want to shout out uh, Andrew uh, he came out to one of the shows on my tour uh, because he heard me talking about it in the episode and uh, he's nice. like, he, he talked about how much he loved the podcast so shout out shout out Andrew you're a sweet boy yeah shout <laughs> out to all those all those dogs yeah all those dogs <laughs> We see you. MCU. Let's get oh. back to it. Hey, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, so I will say I really wasn't like, like at the post credit scene, I didn't really care for really either Bruce Banner or uh, Captain Marvel. I was just like, Ugh. Yeah, gonna be and it's also cooler? was like the same line. Like anything Captain Marvel does, she's like, "Oh, sorry, I'm busy. Peace." Yeah, why is she always dipping all the time? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like we get it. You're in charge of protecting the entire universe, but like, yeah. How about you make some time for us? You know. Wait, have, <laughs> did you see the? <laughs> for real, we're part of the universe, Captain Marvel. How about you make some time for us? <laughs> you selfish piece of That's shit. That's who I think Miss Marvel will like fill the role of. Like she'll be. She'll the give us quality Earth. time. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm so excited for the next. So, what's next on the MC News agenda? Eternal Eternals, which I'm really hyped yeah. for. Honestly, it looks dope. It looks, yep. it looks yeah. different. It lo- looks genuinely different. It looks dope, and I'm excited. Yeah, and we got a bomb uh, cast, man. Yeah, yeah for we, real. Like yeah, an incredible cast. cast. Cool to see the Stark boys back up in there. Yeah, right. Jon Snow and Rob Stark. I do want. How about? Hey, let's take a second. I mean, we can. I want to jump back. You know us. We're on focus. You know we. Um, uh, <laughs> we should take a second just because we're not finished with Sandman September. All right. Let's talk about that trailer, baby. Right? Ooh, yes. Yeah. There's still Sandman in this episode. We didn't oh. leave you hanging. We're yeah. going to finish it up. This no is worry, just a we'll little... finish it up. We're stoners. Yeah. You know, sometimes we get I distracted. Ex- I yeah. accept. I will even accept responsibility. I went on tour and just like had no time and was just basically like, I hate these guys in this podcast. <laughs> I'm never doing what they want me to. Hey, we hey, instead of reading know. about dreams, you were living your dreams, oh, man. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> oh, dude. But that trailer was awesome. It really was. I think it feels like the comic. Okay. Yeah. Yes to that. There's one thing I didn't like and only one thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't think, Lannister. No, <laughs> I, I just don't like that the dude wasn't like bone white. Like he was just a white kid. Oh uh, yeah. I mean, in I the don't comics, know. Like there's white people next to him. And he, he's like right, ch- right, right. He's like literally chalky white. And I also didn't like that his eyes weren't like completely black. 
his right. eyes are like and his hair black. wasn't that crazy either yeah his, his eyes are like always black and it says it's like looking into like the twinkling stars yeah like they were like regular just human eyes I was, that's the only thing that disappointed me you remember how uh in the last episode i said morpheus is just like uh tall gangly emo kid that's exactly yes. what it was i feel like yes. yeah gangly. i feel like i feel like they listened to the episode and just took it way too literally <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> although i do like that actor's voice i think it's a perfect uh morpheus yeah they didn't voice, you didn't hear it in the trailer but if you look online uh, the N- Netflix did their special event where they dropped the trailer and right before it, Neil Gaiman talked for a li- little while. And then the this, this guy playing Morpheus. Morpheus talked in like, I don't know if he speaks like that in real life. It seemed like he was like, I'm sure he was putting it on. I think that was the point. It was to showcase yeah. his, his voice, but he did sound very much like I would read his voice. Like it, yeah. there's no question about it. He sounds like Morpheus, yeah. which is to me, I even said in our text that it sounds like James McAvoy's voice in the audible version. Oh no. yeah, yeah. So, which I haven't yeah. listened to, but I. So wait, so there's a second season of that out now too. Yeah, it just came out last week. Yeah, volume nice. three and four, right? I think it's a few more. Three, yeah. four, five, maybe. Maybe yeah, it's part two. Ooh. Yeah, it's cool. Damn, I really need to listen to that. Dude, the first one is so good. Yeah, so that's the only thing I didn't like. Other than that, I'm hyped for it. It looks really cool. Literally, the dialogue is ripped right from the book. Even his helmet, his ruby, they show. Yeah. So I thought that was cool. I feel like it's going to be very accurate. I just want him to look. Dude, you know what? The the idea of it being accurate and it like doing going into some of like the terrifying aspects of Sandman is kind of crazy to think about. Going to hell and talking to Lucifer. Do you think Netflix is gonna like go that hard? Yeah, yeah. Why not? That'd be six. I don't know because they're bitches. I don't know about that. Oh, they also revealed who's playing Death, and she she looks awesome. I mean, like she. It's obviously different. She's not. Like you, like we said, everyone's bone white in the comics. This is this is a black actress, so she's not exactly how Death is gonna look. But I think she like from the poster, it looks awesome. Like her attire is like Death. Like she okay. she kind of has the vibe of Death. See, like but Death oh, seems yeah. like a very laid back character. That's fine. Like, I don't care if like it's a black actor. I don't even care. Like I just want them to look comic. Like he, they're Eternals. They don't look like humans. Like they're all yeah. crazy. Like just I don't well, know. death. But death, even in the comics, is like someone that would be like your buddy or your friend. Like, oh man, you just died. It's like it's all good. But what I mean, here. it's like, like it's like the Joker. Like they're stupid pale white. That's like that's like one of the off putting things about him. Yeah, like yeah. That should be one of the more jarring things when you summon this dude from another dimension, not for him just to look like an eighteen year old white goth kid. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. It, sh- it should look like what the fuck is this thing? You know. And like people have been tweeting like Neil Gaiman, and he's saying like they're like, oh, is he? I always liked in the comics how when different cultures saw him, he looked different, and he's yeah. like, yes, he's gonna look different. That'll be cool. That's cool. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> and they'll probably just like have his voice be maybe the yeah. maybe a different voice. Who knows? Mm. Dude, I want to see the cat episode. Yeah. Oh, and Neil Gaiman. Someone asked Neil Gaiman about that. He, they're like, "Oh man, are we going to be able to see like this live action version of a Night of a Thousand Dream of a Thousand Cats?" And he's like, "Yes." Uh, he just said, "Yes." Oh hell yeah! That's, <laughs> That's sick. Yeah. So there's some there's some good shit coming our way. Dude, yeah, I like that we're gonna get to do the Sandman series and then revisit it again later when the show comes out. Yep. We're primed. We're ready. Like, again, I had never read the Sandman. Now that I've read all of it, I'm like, oh. Uh, are we have, at any point going to, like, dip our toes into, like, overture and stuff like that? Maybe, like, down the line, down the line. But Yeah, I'm like, not saying yeah, right the now. Sandman. I think we uh, other, gave other the, the commies enough of yeah. the Sandman yeah. for one month. <laughs> well, I mean, I think people like it, honestly. No, like, for sure. At least, like, the people who are in... It's a very niche. So the people who are into it We're are going to be, like... niche. <laughs> Ooh. Are we, though? Yes, I think, absolutely. I think we're yeah. super palatable to every living person. I never said we're not palatable. We're palatable. Oh, said, we're palatable. I said we're niche. Yeah, Ooh. that's different. It, it just means, means if you not like, everyone if you have an exquisite palette. <laughs> yeah, not everyone. Not everyone likes yeah. comics. Not everyone likes weed. Not everyone yeah. Cody, likes our comic opinions. Oil I'm sure. on everything. So <laughs> <laughs> my, my palette is a little more refined. Than that's that's you awesome. Know refined. All right. So, how many Joe Pesci's are we giving Shang Chi? Mm. I'll start it. I'm going to give it a six. There's oh. nothing I disliked about the movie. It was one of my favorite MCU movies, probably top five or top 10 for sure. Favorite MCU movies easily. 
Okay. Jake, I want to hear yours before I give mine. Probably a five something, honestly. I liked it a lot. I just, there was something, it might even just have been the post credits. I, I don't know. <laughs> You just like weren't the fan. No, that's not true. Post- I liked it a lot. But of the, also, of the post noticed, credits, I meant. I've noticed I also didn't go back to see it twice. And a lot of superhero movies I do go back to see twice. So I'm gonna I honestly that. thought about going back today to see it because I had seen it like a month ago. That's true. I also saw it a month ago. So maybe I should re-see it. When it's on Disney Plus again, I will want to see it again. Yeah. I think that's probably that might be one of the reasons why I might maybe not was as jazzed about it. You guys went like opening weekend. I just saw it a couple of days ago. So yeah. like all the hype had died down. It was like, you know what I'm saying? In one of the smaller theaters at the, hmm. like, I mean, which, I mean, maybe not took away, but I'm going to give it a salt, an even five. I'm giving just it because, even five. just because, uh, the straight up, the only thing I really hated, and I do blame Jake for this. The BMW, <laughs> the BMW <laughs> shit, dude. That shit like made me uncomfortable. Like I was like, I, I, I know I wouldn't have even thought twice about it if Jake had never <laughs> yeah. said anything. I have a key after, eye. But after Jake pointed <laughs> it out, I was just like, oh my God, the BDMW product placement in this movie is honestly infuriating. It like took me out of the movie for a second. You know what Damn, I mean? dude. I don't, that, it really didn't affect me like that. <laughs> yeah, not me at all. Ugh. Cody's five is not my five. Everyone, I just want people to know. <laughs> but that's the I see. But I liked the end credits more. <laughs> you know what I that's really like? Shit, we didn't even talk about it, and I, I loved it because it was funny the first time. And then the callback is when they're supposed like the first time. They're supposed, they have work the next day, and they're like, "Oh, we should go to bed early." And then, oh, and they go karaoke, and like, or and they get shit faced <laughs> and go karaokeing. Yeah, and then yeah. I loved when when Wong is like, you know, like your lives are changing forever. You're now going to be like protectors of this world. And he's like go home, get some rest. And then <laughs> Sean, she's like, or, and all three of them go out. I thought that was fucking yeah. great. Seeing oh, yeah, and they're singing Hotel them. California. Yeah. <laughs> like that part was funny as shit. And the theater reacted really well. Like, I don't know. So yeah, I like no, it. It was, it was a very endearing movie. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I'm going to give it a solid five room for growth. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't want it to. It was honestly just the BMW product placement, that one scene in particular. Yeah, if you could get over really, that, it's a great movie. I know, but I also, yeah. like, I really didn't like it. Was a new, it's a new MCU property, and it's a character that's, I don't want to say obscure, but definitely lesser known in the span sure. of it. Much like Guardians of the Galaxy was. Like, I wasn't going into Guardians of the Galaxy, like, oh my God, this is going to be great. I was like, yeah. all right. And then I became a huge fan. That's exactly how I feel about. Now, Shang-Chi, like it makes me want to read more comics he's in and it makes me want a sequel immediately. I, uh, yeah, I also love that this new property, like this relatively unknown property and character, it was like the first official movie of phase four. Oh, really? No, I thought I, uh, my friend said that Black Widow counts as the first official movie. Is oh, I didn't four. know that. Well, hmm. well, so th- that's what I said is I thought this was the first official movie phase four. My friend was like, no, Black Widow was. And I was like, damn, that sucks that Black Widow takes that spot over. Yeah. That makes me less thrilled. Yeah. <laughs> also, also Black Widow kind of takes place. I mean, like before the end of in, in Avengers, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, but it still counts mm-hmm. as a phase Four, four movie. movie, yeah, yeah, because mm. it also establishes Yelena. True facts, big time facts. Yeah, yeah. Noah was also pretty cool. I, I forgot to mention that his sister or the actress that plays his sister, she got the role as an open casting call, like she just signed up, and it was her first ever movie, nice. and she fucking killed it. She was cool. Yeah, she was hot. Too. That's sick. Um. She also, we didn't talk <laughs> much. Uh, who was the actor that Razor Fist? Who was Razor Fist? Who what? played Razor Fist? Oh, I don't know. I think he's like a MMA guy. That's what I was thinking. He, Cause yeah. he like, just like his personality and stuff. He acted like somebody who was like in MMA or wrestling or something like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they never call him Razor Fist. You just see it on the car and you're like, Oh, okay. He yeah. is Razor Fist. Razor. He has a Razor Fist. What else would he be called? <laughs> yeah. That was, that was cool. ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that was that like, was it was cool, hilarious. Man. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know everything about the movie. I really like the mystical side of it. The mm. animation for the the animals the and the yeah the dragon. Yeah, and the I love those uh, yes. those was, lions. 
Yeah, those, those giant were lion sick. things. Those were cool. It gave me Wakanda vibes, like how they had like oh, the wow. armored rhinos. Remember those? Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. The lions made me. I wish I could ride one of those. Lions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Falcor. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Hardcore Falcor vibes. Yep, yeah, it really that, did. <laughs> the dragon at the end. Yeah. So if someone hasn't done it, they should put the never ending story song. Uh, well, that's, uh, dude, you should do that uh, for one of the yeah, promos. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it feels like someone should Betray have. Well, the, the thing is that there's no way to have that clip right now. <laughs> Until it's on Disney Plus, there's no way to. No, we can go on YouTube and find it. Trust. Mm, maybe. It would be hard. Nah, I gotta I've looked. I, I was now. looking earlier for like oh, scenes, really? but like. There's only the bus scene that that you can find a lot of places. Dude, the bus scene was wild. Dude, just a whole def- definitely some of the best MCU fights. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah you, for sure. Who do you think is the superior fighter? Like Shang-Chi, Black Panther, Captain America? Oh, he's definitely kicking Cap's ass. Really? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, hell yeah. I don't know about Cap that. is just like a a fighter. Like Shang-Chi's a martial artist. Yeah, but Cap goes no. toe to toe. Uh, yeah, I would disagree. With, I don't. I, yeah, I, Cap I goes toe to toe with both Black Panther. I mean, I think Cap would like. Like, I think I think you're underselling Cap. I'm with Team Jake here. I think you're underselling dispute. Cap hard. I think you're also like, yeah. I'm just talking a straight fist fight. Like, even I think, even without the ten rings, you're saying with or without the ten rings? Oh, without the ten rings. If he has the ten rings, he'll probably win. Of course. Yeah, mm, but without no, the ten without rings, the, I'm just talking you. about pure fighting ability. A I hand, still think it's a strict hand to hand combat. But he can he do that wind bending without the ten rings? Mm, he might be able to. I don't know. I just don't think without even without any powers, I, I'm giving it to uh Sean. Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm not giving it no, to Steve. I'm not. I'm not. Steve. Actually, Dude, Cap's one of like the pillars. We should we should poll people, see what they say. Yeah. Yeah, commies. Tell us what you think. <laughs> yeah. Who's gonna win? Who's the best fighter? Of the, th- uh, do, is it down to those three? Do you guys think T'Challa, Steve Rogers, T'Challa, and Steve Shang-Chi. Rogers and Shang Chi? As far as hand to hand combatants in the MCU, what? Not Black Widow. We're not. We're not putting Natasha in there. Black no. Widow's getting tooled on by all three of those. I'm sorry. You think yeah, Black Widow can go toe to toe with Shang Chi? No way. No, 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 way. no. I'm just saying she's a good fighter. Okay, fine. But I'm just, she's her whole thing it. is fighting. Yeah, but that's her whole thing. Like that. Like you think she's getting like say there's a tournament. It's like T'Challa, Steve, Shang Chi. If we're gonna do uh, Black Widow, then we might as well do Hawkeye. No, Hawkeye's definitely. That's not. what I'm saying. Is like th- those and two are Spider not Man. Fine, okay. No those Black Widow and Hawkeye. Oh yeah, but Spider Man. Spider Man, no, because he's not. I'm talking about like, like, like fighting, like fighting. I'm just trained about fighting. fighting. Yeah, because Steve's okay. So Steve's representing the brawlers. Like, like we could throw a Winter Soldier in there if you want. Mm. Yeah, it, Winter Soldier would definitely, but. Uh, I think like after the fights with both like that we saw in Falcon Winter Soldier, I feel like that knocks him down just like a peg. Yeah, you know what I, I mean? I agree. I agree. Yeah. I'm telling you, I think you you're know, three fighters as of now in the MCU. Yeah, that, that's fine. Because uh, I was even Cap thinking in the comics, like um, there's a there's an arc where Shang Chi teaches Spider Man his own special spider foo so that he could become a better <laughs> that's fighter. <ridiculous. laughs> <laughs> Because he loses his spider sense, so he has to like rely on being like an actual good fighter. Okay, that's cool. But I still think Shang Chi in the MCU is beating Steve Rogers and T'Challa. That's my stance. No, I disagree hard mm. on that. You say Steve, and what does Cody say? Yeah, Cody, what, what's your take? I say it's. I, th- I say out of the three, Sean's probably like, and I'm not saying by like a landslide, but I'd say third, honestly. Wow, I might, I might go so far as to say such a thing as well. like, I, like I said, I'm not saying it's like drastically. Like, I'm yeah, not saying yeah. Sean's getting it's like almost on. a tie, but <laughs> yeah, but the other two edge him out because Sean did, even though he was holding back, he did lose to his sister. True, the- she was even a bit. Be- so she, so then she, that I would put uh, his sister as the top fighter right now in the MCU. Ugh. Still no. Still no. Yeah, I'd put. I'd put. If I were to rank them, I'd probably do those three. Maybe her. Maybe Winter Soldier. We could throw Yelena in there. I don't know. <laughs> Red Guardian. Who sucked? Yeah. <laughs> like, Red Guardian. Was yeah. yeah, he was whack. No, I think Cap is is higher than you think, Anthony. I don't know. Hmm. I gotta think about it. 
We should ask Tori and see what your first Tori is. Yeah, we're gonna ask all yeah, of let's all just ask the, everybody. Yeah, let's, we'll put it out into the internet. Yeah, <laughs> both on Twitter and Instagram. We'll the, ask them all. But I like Shang Chi. I give it a solid five. I'm super solid down for five. a sequel. Yeah, yeah, it's a great one. Uh, yeah, it was a good movie. I liked it a lot. Yeah, cool. Well. Well, that's another episode. Hey. So Get tune it, in please. next week for the real finale of, of Sandman, Sandman Man September. September. Dude, I'm really excited. I'm really excited. Are you really excited? I'm not excited at all. Hi, you're listening to Comics and Chronic, and I'm Jacob H. I'm Cody Cannon. And I'm Anthony Iannaccio. And you can tune in every Thursday to hear new episodes of Comics and Chronic. And make sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Comics and Chronic. That's Comics, the letter N, Chronic. We'll see you guys next week. Woo! Peace.